one second. Uh, so again, I'm marketing communications manager for Chemtronics. Uh, Holly's asked me to um, cover with you uh, dusters and also throwing in uh, alcohol wipes or, or pre-saturated wipes. And the reason I'm covering those is because uh, in the business realm, uh, these are going to be uh, very much uh, very common products for your customers. You know, all your customers. Uh, somewhere in their facility are going to be using these products. So it's a good place to start as you become uh, familiar with uh, distributing um, Chemtronics products. I have a, a one bonus slide. A WD-40 comes up a lot. And so um, I have one slide for WD-40 as well uh, if we have time. Okay, so first of all, an overview of Duster. Duster is called canned air a lot. Your customers will ask for canned air, compressed air, dusting gas. But one thing I want to caution you on, it does not contain air, okay? I, you don't see on our website canned air uh, because uh, it is a chemical in there, and it's the same chemical that's in your refrigerator, in your auto air conditioner, and I wish that didn't keep popping up. Um, and it is our number one selling product. Okay, so uh, it is a big selling product. If you aren't selling these products to your customers, somebody else is selling uh, these products to your customers. So it is an opportunity out there that you may be walking by. So it's, it's good to be, be familiar with it. What are people doing with all this canned air? Well, think about the biggest competition for this product is compressed air, right? An airline. And so if think about I'm going to shut down. I'm, I apologize. I'm going to shut down that software, whatever keeps popping up. My apologies, but it is really getting on my nerves. Okay. Sorry for the continued technical problems. But if you think about anything that an airline does not get to, um, that's what's going to be uh, a duster could be used for. Okay. So you, where you need that high powered blast blowing out dust out of electronics, cleaning out connectors, uh, blowing out entrapped cleaners. Uh, you know, so in other words, if you're cleaning a, a product and you have trapped cleaner water under components, you can blow that out. Uh, in the electronics uh, assembly realm, you've got uh, stencils that you can blow out the apertures. Uh, and it could be kind of any kind of field repair that gets dusty and dirty machines, registers, printers, copiers, you know, any of that. Now, there's three types of propellants in uh, dusters, okay, that are going to be common uh, in the United States, and I want to cover these with you. And it gets to be a lot of these chemical blah, blah names, and just bear with me, uh, but generally speaking, you're going to see these, uh, you know, on the can. Um, and it makes a really big difference on cost and other things. So it's something to be very much aware of if you're going to go out and, and sell duster to your customers. Um, first of all, the, the most common, uh, I wish I could get rid of that, the most common in our industry, in the uh, professional industry, would be HFC 134A. Okay, uh, That is Generally speaking, the same material that's used in refrigerating systems everywhere, okay? And the reason it's used everywhere is it's safe. It's non-flammable, okay? So that's why uh, in the industrial realm, in the uh, professional realm, that's going to be so common, okay? So um, I apologize for that continued interruption. I don't know why it's being so stubborn. Let me try again. Epicor is just a stubborn program. Okay, I think that should take care of it. Okay, so, uh, but when I say market, you'll notice I put electronics in electrical market. And the reason for that is there are limits where you can uh, legally use this product within the United States, okay? And, and it's it's uh, you're really only supposed to use it when there's energized circuits involved. So generally speaking, uh, I'll tell you that it's used for electronics and electrical cleaning. Okay, uh, and the reason for that restriction is global warming. 
Okay, you see in the news, global warming is, is a bigger and bigger concern. Okay, we're not going to get into whether, you know, who believes in what, but uh, uh, the go governments uh, and municipalities do believe in global warming, and they're restricting certain chemicals because of global warming potential. So uh, 134A is being restricted except for when there's real safety issues with electrical you know, live circuitry. Between you, you and me, uh, people are using it in other things, but, um, but generally speaking, it's supposed to be where there's potential for that spark. Um, it's a moderately priced product. It is non-flammable, and you can see that GWP, that's global warming potential, is 1,300. That is the amount, uh, it's, time, it's the amount uh, times the CO2 potential. Okay, so we hear about CO2 having such an impact on global warming. Well, 134A has 1,300 times more of the impact than CO2. Okay, so it does... Uh, you know, how they measure that, it does make it make an impact, okay? So, uh, in the consumer realm, okay, the most common product is HFC 152A, okay? And the reason for that is, of course, cost, okay? People like cheap products out in the consumer realm, not that we do it in the professional realm, but cost tends to come up on top uh, on the consumer realm. Uh, the reason this is less expensive, it's, it is flammable. And I have a couple slides that demonstrate that it's not as bad as that sounds, okay? So in other words, this product can go into the professional environment uh, safely, but they have to be aware of its limits, okay? So they get a cheaper product, but they have to be more aware of where they're using it. Global warming potential is still up there, but it is much, much lower than 134A. So you can see here it's 140 times that of CO2. Okay, so not great, but uh, a little better. Uh, then when you go HFO 1234ZE, okay, that's a tough one to remember, but that's the new stuff that's uh, come up. And that's used because it's green, okay? It's roughly equivalent to CO2 with its global warming potential, okay? So this is the new stuff. And when you get the new stuff, it's very expensive. There's no way around it. Most customers won't entertain this unless there is some green initiative or that it's so restrictive that they can't use 152A for whatever reason and they're not allowed to use 134A. Then they have no choice then they're going to go to this product. So not really the product to lead with, more with the product to um, offer to solve a particular need, okay? So I'm going to take it off mute and answer any questions you might have on this, uh, if you have any. So just one second. Everyone can talk now. Uh, do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, here we still, we got music. Are you guys able to see the full slide? A little worried about yes, it. Okay, so you can see it all the way to the third, co the uh, HFO column. Yes. Okay, good. All right, if there's no questions, I'm going to put it back on mute. Only the host can talk now. All right, so going back to uh, the flammability issue, okay? I've got some videos of some flammability testing, okay? This is called a flame extension test, okay? So basically what you have is a, a little oil lamp, and there is a flame there. You can't see it very well, but it is a, it's a blue flame. It's very, you know, it's very hard to see. But basically you spray over that in a controlled way, and see if it extends that flame, okay? That's just a, your, your basic flame extension test. So ignore the can, that's an older can, so I, I shot these a while ago. But, um, so you'll see um, this first one is 134A. So this is the non-flammable product. So as you spray over, it puts the flame out, okay? So I'll do it one more time. Not that exciting, okay? Now here's one, okay, 
if you guys have used duster you'll notice when you turn it upside down it sprays really really cold temperature frigid uh, liquid okay and so it sprays frost so basically uh, it's like negative 60 degrees as it comes out of the can um, and if something's gonna light it'll probably be that liquid that comes out of the can so you turn it upside down and here's 134 a again turned upside down not too exciting right it doesn't do anything fun uh, so again once again Boom. All right. So here, 152A. Okay. So this is the flammable stuff, right side up. That's disappointing. Okay. It didn't do anything. It put it out again. Because 152A in the vapor phase uh, generally wouldn't have enough concentration to a light to extend that flame, okay, to cause a problem. Now that's a caution there. If a customer is using it in a in a, a poorly ventilated area where those uh, those uh, that concentration can increase over to a certain point, and I believe that's eight uh, percent, it uh, can create a safety issue. Okay, so ventilation is key. Okay, that to to use this safely. Okay, right side up again. Okay. All right, now let's have some fun. Turn it upside down. Let's spray the liquid over the flame. All right, now we're talking. Okay, so yeah, that's what that's what we're talking about. So you light that flame. So that's it's flammable when turned upside down. No question about it. So if there's a an, a danger if they're moving around those that can, where there's a danger that it's going to expel liquid, that's another potential for a problem. Okay, now keep in mind, we're just looking at flames here, open flames, sparks. So the question can come up, especially when you're dealing with electronics, is, is the same danger exists for hot surfaces, like in soldering? So here I have really tried to have some fun, uh, clamp down a soldering iron upside down at uh, 900 degrees Fahrenheit, that's really hot for a soldering iron, okay? Most people will not be soldering at those kind of temperatures, but this HACO station does go that high, so I cranked it up, turned it upside, and then turned the can upside down to see what would happen. And again, really, really disappointing. Uh, so uh, what does that tell us? Well, the auto ignition point of 152A is about 850 degrees but it's also cooling that iron down at the same time. So not in a professional environment, you can use 152A if it's well ventilated and if there's no sparks and flames. Okay, that's the conclusion I would give with this. Okay, so hopefully that was clear enough. So competing with retail, okay, that's gonna be real common. Someone runs out to Costco, someone runs out to Walmart and gets a uh, two packs of duster that is going to be cheaper than anything that you're going to be able to offer from us without a doubt okay so what's the difference how do you sell against that well it, you know if somebody is just looking for the cheapest thing possible of course there's only so much you how, so far you can take this but the main thing is purity okay if you're spraying this on some kind of device that you're trying to keep clean you don't want to be spraying down any contamination. Now, uh, consumer duster, generally speaking, contains bitterant, which is a material that makes it taste bad because, unfortunately, kids out there are huffing. It's called dusting out there. It comes in the, up in the news once in a while, and they're breathing this stuff in, which is why I stress it's not air. They're trying to breathe this stuff in to get a high, to get a buzz, okay? And to prevent that, they make it taste bad. But that's material that does get expelled with the duster. And so uh, if, if you spray it on a circuit board, you're spraying a minute amount of this bitterant, this contamination on the circuit board. So if that's an issue, then a better way to go is to go with professional material, the Chemtronics brand, okay? Another thing is uh, almost exclusively um, 
consumer products are 152A, so the flammable products. So this is where you do talk about, um, you know, the flammability, the risks. And that's why I showed you those videos. So at least you can talk about it intelligently that it's not going to blow up the place, but, you know, you can work with them in terms of what's the best solution for them. Chemtronics is highly filtered, okay? Uh, it's a trusted brand, especially as you get into the electronics realm and to the high-tech realm. Uh, then one other thing I want to watch, I want you to watch out for is as you're competing with another duster, watch out for that fill weight. Okay, so you'll notice uh, the Maxell has 3.5 ounces. Okay, I could put 3.5 ounces on in any size can and it would spray just fine. Okay, and that's a retail trick is they will put, uh, a, you know, a little bit in a big can and if, if you're not watching out, you're comparing a 10-ounce can to a 5-ounce can, and of course it's going to be more expensive, okay? So it's another thing to watch out for to make sure either you're comparing like to like or you're dividing out the price by the ounces, okay? That way you get a true uh, net volume price. Just to go through the uh, Duster product line, uh, we do have a, a very extensive uh, product line for Dusters in the Chemtronics line. Uh, and the difference, uh, we have different velocity choices. So the speed, the power that comes out of that can, and it's not, it has nothing to do with the propellant, it's the valving, it's the, it's the sprayer, okay, that we've changed. And, and intuitively, you know, I mean, the higher the blast, if, you, if you've got some stubborn soils, when I blast it off, you go to the higher velocity. Um, and so we've got three options, okay? We've got a standard velocity, which is going to be your general market, uh, office, consumer -y. It's going to work most places, okay? And that's going to be your lower cost products uh, that we offer. The higher velocity would be, a, for example, uh, UltraJet 7, or 70, excuse me, would be a higher velocity and then the highest velocity would be the UltraJet product, uh, which is very, very strong. And you can feel it. It kind of kicks back and it pushes your, your hand back a little bit when you spray it. So it is uh, noticeably more powerful. Okay. Another, another thing to watch out for uh, that in our product line is we have an invertible version. Okay. So what that means, you can turn it upside down like that and get it hard to reach areas. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when you, normally when you turn a duster upside down, very frigid liquid comes out, okay? And so uh, if you're moving around trying to get at areas, you can mistakenly spray that liquid. It may not hurt anything, or you may be spraying very sensitive type of um, uh, components where that's a concern. So we offer the UltraJet Allway duster, okay? And then finally, and this is kind of exotic this we don't you know this is not a big seller this is not something i would suggest you bring in stock uh but we do sell a refill package that has a can with a chrome trigger okay that chrome trigger uh it's a, a fancier sprayer obviously and the big difference would be um that uh, you can ground it okay so a plastic trigger a plastic actuator is going to charge up a bit uh, and get hot if you get sensitive electronics. So you could potentially clip uh, this and ground it or uh, ground it with your regular uh, wrist strap as you're holding it and it would, it would dissipate uh, any, any kind of charge that would come out. And I'm looking at chat. I'm not seeing any questions. So do, please just uh, fill out a chat if you have any questions. Okay, getting into pre-saturated wipes, okay, we call them pre-sat, you know, we can call them wet wipes, okay, we don't call them baby wipes, but you get the idea, they're wet wipes, pre-saturated with the solvent, uh, we've got a number of different varieties, and I'll tell you, most of these are in our top 10, top 20 products, okay, so chem pads definitely are up there in the top 20 range, so these are big sellers, the chem pads are excellent excellent product for a toolboxes something like that where you can keep you know a single pads that won't dry out uh, and then they're, they're there if you need them so this is a chem pad is a 91 percent alcohol ipa 
isopropyl alcohol. Um, when I say it's 97, 91%, the rest is water. Okay, so it's uh, got a little bit of water in there, but it's mostly alcohol, and it's a very thick pad. It's not, if you get the hand wipes, you get some lobster, you get this really thin hand wipe. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a real tough, thick pad. It feels a little more like a felt pad than it feels like a wipe. Okay, so just want to make sure you're clear about that. So very, very good seller. The, these other ones are a little more niche, but they're still, uh, they still do sell very well. We got screen prep wipes. Okay, so this is the wipe down uh, monitors. Um, and what it does is it leaves just a little bit of an anti-static treatment on the monitor itself. So it prevents that ge uh, static generation from the monitor itself. Okay, but does a nice job of cleaning those screens. Could be used for cell phones, could be used for other things as well. Optic prep wipes, these are actually lens grade tissue that has a little, has alcohol in it, okay? So this would be more for higher end cleaning for lenses, okay? And then you've got uh, Electrowash MX wipes. These are for heavy duty type degreasing. It's a big wipe in there. It's like, uh, I don't remember the size, but you know something more like a 12 by 12 wipe. You unfold it, it's saturated with a pretty strong degreaser that uh, can take care of business. That's, uh, that particular degreaser is real common on the, um, the cabling uh, side of things, okay? So you get that thick grease, the icky pick. Uh, it's good for cutting that through that. And then as you get into the tub wipes, again, very, very good sellers. When you're talking about 100 count tub wipes, those are definitely in our top 10. Okay, so if you're not selling alcohol tub wipes to your customers, somebody else is going in there and getting that business. Okay, so I just want to encourage you to, and, you know, to get your sales guys to kind of open up the blinders a little bit and take a watch out for those tubs if they're not currently selling those. Now, we have uh, two different varieties of tubs that uh, traditionally we've sold. Uh, one is a 91% alcohol for a faster evaporation, a little stronger cleaning. The other one's at 70%, saves a little money, also slows down the evaporation, so it has more time to break down that soil. Now, you'll see on this slide that we sell... Um, uh, 125 wipe tubs and refills, and this is these are new. The reason for that is is pretty intuitive, right? We're getting the cost down per wipe. Okay, less packaging, more wipes. So if you're in a situation where you've tr you're trying to dislodge some business, trying to kind of get one up on your competition. This could allow you to squeak by and offer a little bit better price, offer a value of um, you know, the value of less packaging to dispose of, okay? So some other advantages there. So the refills, pretty intuitive. Then a, a refill will drop right in, and, um, and so you, you don't have to replace the tub at all. You can keep reusing the same tub. All right, so now the bonus slide, selling against WD-40, okay? Uh, WD-40, uh, the reason I put this in here is people treat WD-40 out in the marketplace, especially in the consumer markets, as something magical, okay? If it's broken, if it's squeaking, if it's greasy, spray WD-40. And I cringe when I hear about people degreasing with WD-40, cleaning with it. It is not a cleaner, okay? It's not magic. It's a good product. It's a cheap product but it is what it is. It's fish oil, yes, fish oil, uh, hydrocarbon solvent, so basically a, a oil-based solvent, which is flammable, and some other ingredients, and then a, a solvent called xylene, okay? Xylene is actually a pretty toxic solvent, okay? So something to be aware of, okay? So if they're spraying and getting all over their hands, it's like, guys, just, just watch what you're doing. Uh, it's a light lube, okay? It's not a heavy-duty grease. It's not going to stay there and penetrate like a penetrant would. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a decent light lube, but it is not a degreaser, okay? And it's, 
if you're going to compete as a lube, uh, we have a Chemtronics DPL, which is a deep penetrating lubricant, okay? And there's a part number right there. Uh, that's what I would offer. That's all we have to offer on that side of things. It would be a higher quality lubricant that penetrates into uh, what's uh, sticking, basically. And then for a degreaser, I got two options here. One is a contact cleaner, Power Wash PR, and the Electro Wash PX. Going to clean a heck of a lot better than WD-40. Um, and, uh, you know, and it, in terms of cost, like I said, it's a consumer product. I'm not sure how com competitive in terms of being cost competitive, but in terms of a higher performing product and be able to do a better job for the customer, or, you know, the Chemtronics products certainly would do that. Okay, so now that's all I have. I'm going to unmute it for. Everyone can talk now. Of course, we have still got uh, got music going. So, any questions that, that anybody might have? Kevin, this is Holly. Um, hey, Holly. on the ES-1017 duster, uh, so it's a special price of six thirty-two dollars for 10 on that, and then the uh, ES-1015, uh, we're doing eight fifty-one for 10 and then there's a special on the SIT-100 uh, T white, so those are fourteen forty dollars a tub. So just everybody who your orders in before the end of the month, we do have really um, nice pricing on these three items for the month of February. Okay. If there are no other questions, we will close out the webinar. I want to thank everybody for joining today and thank you, Kevin, for taking time to do the presentation. And uh, we will work on our audio problems going forward with these. I know we've had some issues. Uh,